Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, start your engines, because our next chat is a CES fan favorite and one that is certain to make headlines. Please welcome Indy Autonomous Challenge President Paul Mitchell. Paul, we're here to nerd out with cars. Good to see you again. It's start your software, not start your engines. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, start your software. Okay, is that is that a pat am I am I breaking any laws? No, no, no. That? Okay, or You're rules? Good. Okay, so um, you know, I've been able to go on the track last year, which was an incredible experience. Yeah. Uh, for people that are watching for the first time, what is the India Autonomous Challenge? India Autonomous Challenge is a competition among leading research university teams who program AI drivers or robot drivers who are capable of piloting fully autonomous race cars at speeds as high as 170 miles an hour <laughs> around an oval track at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway during CES. And it really is kind of feels like it ties a bow around the whole convention because this is it's the most action packed uh, really event that we have at the show and it, it, it melds technology and racing yeah. at the same time you can't really beat it I mean that's exciting for you yeah I mean I think it's a it showcases the fusion of technology that's going on at CES right so we've got we've got sensor fusion lidar radar we've got supercomputing we've got uh, cloud computing we've got um, all kinds of tech in the car, and then also just the, the fact that it's racing and motorsport, which is fun and exciting. And I, we love the extension of CES out to the racetrack and the partnership we have with CES to get folks out there to see it in, in, in person. And you don't always get to do that uh, at, at West Hall, where a lot of the, the, the displays have to be static, obviously. I mean, uh, most of us are in here, and we don't we don't really see the light of day. <laughs> so it, it's great to have it out there. Um, what can we expect to see tomorrow uh, for this year's uh, challenge? So um, we're hoping for higher speeds. If weather's cooperative, you do need a certain track temp in order to achieve the highest speed. So hopefully we, we get past that 170 barrier that we broke last year. I think you're going to see better head-to-head -head racing. Uh, the AI drivers are starting to drive more like human race car drivers. They're, they're making maneuvers, and they're avoiding uh, uh, collisions in ways that look like a, a proper race car driver. Um, and then honestly, we've got some new tech on the cars. So we've got a new uh, supercomputer from, from DSpace um, that is allowing the teams to do more with all of the, the sensors and all the technology on the car. And we've got some great sponsors involved, uh, Luminar that provides our LiDARs, a uh, company uh, Aspire out of UAE. So it's, it's a mix of industry, academia, and even government coming together to make this happen. You know, can you explain, last year, if I recall, uh, during the race, cars could only pass each other in a certain designated zone. Yeah, right. That's correct, right? So this year, they can We got rid it. of that. They can, they can pass each other anywhere they want. So as, as long as they can pass each other, as long as they can pass the car, they can pass the car. The other thing is the, uh, the lead car, the one that's being the defender, is now allowed to have a little bit more free form racing. They can change their race line. We're not letting them block the other car because that, that really wouldn't allow for the passing, but it's basically gonna look closer and closer to what you would expect to see in head-to-head -head racing in Formula One or IndyCar. You, know, you also talk about how this is really a showcase of so many different industries forming together. Uh, why do you think this competition is so important? Well, um, there's a couple different reasons. One is we're helping prove technology out uh, that is going to make it onto uh, cars and vehicle systems uh, to allow people to drive more safely at highway speeds. So we don't just need autonomous vehicles to work as robo taxis. We need them to work at speeds on highway. And so if they can do 170 miles an hour, they can probably do 70 or 80 miles an hour. Well, that's good. That's good, um, right? <laughs> and, and then I think the other thing that we're really contributing is talent development. Mm -hmm. So we've got the best and brightest minds from top universities around the world more than 200 PhD students and faculty that are working on this challenge. And all of that brain power is going to then make its way into the industry to companies that are here at, at CES. And, and we feel like that's a major contribution that we can make. You know, I got to go on the track and really talk to some of these young people. And I was just so impressed where these are some of these are multi uh, universities combining yeah. to form a team, um, you know, whether they're working remotely and collaborating with their with their brains. Why do you think it's also important for their future just to get exposed to stuff like this? Yeah. So, I mean, motorsports is a great proving ground for a young engineer to understand how to solve problems under pressure. Uh, it helps them develop entrepreneurial skills because they've got to figure out how to run a team, how to manage a team. Uh, so, you know, it's one thing to solve a problem in a lab and, you know, have a lot of time to work on it. It's another thing to say, okay, you've got 30 minutes to fix this, otherwise you're out of the competition. So I just think it, it's, a, it's a great proving ground for young talent 
to come into the industry ready to tackle real world problems uh, in, a, in a competitive environment. Um, how long has the Indie Autonomous Challenge been going on for now, roughly? So, so we launched in uh, fall of 2019, but it took a while for us to build the cars up, and so initially it was all simulation races, uh, but we've run our first race in October 2021, and then of course we came here uh, uh, last year for CES. We ran a race at Texas Motor Speedway, and we just announced that for the next two years we're going to be going overseas to Monza, uh, the most famous F1 track really in the wow. world, the Temple of Speed. And that's going to be a big transition from us going from just running on ovals to also running on road courses. But don't worry, we're going to keep coming back to CES. <laughs> no, I mean, that, that, that's amazing to, as you've seen this growth. You know, we, we talked about these young people that are involved in here. You've, the program has been around, I guess we would say roughly three, three four years, years yeah. right? Uh, have you seen what maybe potential career paths have some of these young people that have graduated, what have they moved on to? Yeah. So, um, some of them are starting their own companies. So we've had a, a couple of different spin outs, a company Drive Blocks that came out of the, the German team, Technical University of Munich, uh, Autonoma, which came out of uh, some team members from University of Auburn and Polytechnic of Milan. So some of them are going the entrepreneurial startup route. Others are taking jobs with sponsor companies uh, in the industry and, and other institutions. We've hired some of them to work at <laughs> Indie Autonomous Challenge. And some of them are, are, have got the bug, and I, I see several alumni who have graduated, they got their PhD, but I still see them now working at the institutes or at the centers that are uh, involved in these competitions. So I, I think it's, we've, we've created this, this army of talent, and I yeah. know that years from now, uh, 10 years from now, people are going to look back and say, oh, you were part of Indie Autonomous Challenge, and that hopefully creates its own kind of network within the industry in a way that DARPA did back at the beginning of the autonomous vehicle industry. That's really special, you know, when you explain it like that. It becomes like a, like a club. You know, I'm not going to say fraternity, but it's a yeah. club of that, you know, you can always say, like, I was part of that. And yeah. the fact that you have legacy people coming back to contribute, they got the bug. Yeah. Like they can't let it go. You know, for people that are watching this and they're already fascinated by this and they will be completely like blown away when they see this race, how can teams even get started with the, with the IAC? Are there, is there space for new teams? I mean, So we just, uh, good that you asked, we just <laughs> announced uh, that we're gonna relaunch what are our simulation races. So for the first year of the Indie Autonomous Challenge, everything was simulation based. Teams would submit their software and run it on the cloud in sim races. Uh, obviously, that's easier to do, it's less expensive. It also is a great proving ground to show that a team has the, the AI driver capabilities to maybe eventually compete in, in one of our competitions. So we're gonna relaunch that in partnership with AWS, and that'll allow teams maybe that got started but never made it onto the track, new teams to participate in these sim races, and if they're good enough and they, and they win, and we could give out prizes for, for sim races, then they can earn time on one of our cars and eventually they can wow. become one of the, the competition teams. But it's, it's you know, these, uh, these current teams have a, uh, quite the head start. So it's gonna <laughs> take a while for teams to really prove themselves out. But you mentioned earlier, the other thing is if, if a team looks really talented in the Sim Series, they may get pulled into an existing team. Mm. Somebody may recruit talent out of those universities or add that university onto their existing team. And we've seen that happen already with Carnegie Mellon, for example, joining a team that was previously University of Hawaii and uh, UC San Diego. I think UC Berkeley also joined that team. I, it sounds kind of like you have almost now like a farm system, kind of like the majors and yeah. the minors that can then feed, like funnel that talent through. So you're, you're hitting that at all it, many levels. It, there's a history of that in motorsport. Yeah. You have these yeah. feeder series, you know, Formula 2, Formula 3. And in fact, ironically, even the car we run is an Indy Lights car, which is kind of the feeder series to the full Indy car series. So. Uh, yeah, there's a long history of, the, of drivers needing to go through training at various levels before they get to the, the, the major leagues, if you will. Well, well, Paul, thank you so much for this. Awesome. You know, re really, I mean, I've, I've seen this kind of grow from a baby and an idea where we're like, what is, even as a CES goer, what is the Indie Autonomous Challenge? And now, I mean, myself and a lot of people, they know what it is and it's just growing even bigger. So, yeah, well, you know, congrats the, on that. A lot of that has to do with the partnership with CES. We've, we've grown up together with you guys. You guys were, you know, the big brother helping teach <laughs> us how to do this kind of stuff. So appreciate it. All right, everybody. If you'd like to learn more about this epic race, check out IndieAutonomousChallenge.com or their booth in the West Hall.